Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, coming to here. My name is Douglas Eskdale, and I'm the development director for WorkSAS. I, and I'd like to introduce you to WorkSAS Health Safety, uh, Environment and Quality Management System. Um, it's a, a oh, it's off the screen slightly. Hmm. It's for the management of a, a compliance and operational risk. Um, I've been asked to speak about the the implication of it in terms of the workplace. And so I'm going to focus on a competency, compliance, and a consolidation. The, the system has been built around a three a core a elements of it. The management of people, the management of processes, and the management of procedure, a premises and the management of procedures. The, the people management, people do work, and so uh, you need to manage people. Uh, uh, People do it in a location, so you need to manage the location, and they do procedures. Uh, so the three core modules that we have within WorkSAS that are being currently implemented in the quarry, uh, uh, the aggregate industry, uh, is the workforce, uh, where you manage the, the, the people, both uh, direct labour and contract labour, and uh, you're in there you're confirming the competency of people. Um, and you're looking at the qualifications, the training, their experience, their attitude, and fitness to work, and it links into uh, occupational health in that way. Uh, people do work, uh, and it's the work that people do that we manage as well. So there's a process hub or a process module for managing operations, and you can manage hazardous tasks uh, or uh, regular tasks, as simple as uh, one company was using it for uh, the cleaning staff to... I run the, the risk assessments on, a, I think it was a quarterly basis, as simple as that, to a intricate tasks a controlling a medical gas a within hospitals. Um, a, the work activity is a, both regular and hazardous, and a, it's a mixture of, of various templates that you can put together. A, and we don't have a safety system. It's a, your safety system, not ours. Um, and it's a safety system that you would implement within. Uh, and it's fairly straightforward. Once you put together a, a standard a risk assessment method, state and precautions, link it into the tasks they're going to do, the people who are doing it. Um, you then build up templates that you can mix and match and reuse uh, for a multitude of different situations. I'd have to show you how that works, but it's fairly straightforward to do. Uh, someone turning up in a site and given access, you could, within a couple of minutes, have a, a permit to work or an access permit uh, created for them and give them access. And this is just a, a screenshot of some of the types of uh, work that's pending approval and approved by the technical team before it goes out onto a site. Uh, people work in locations, uh, and uh, these locations vary. For us, uh, it would be... Uh, a quarry, uh, and for you guys it would be a quarry, but we're working in schools and hospitals, uh, and I, I, we're looking at oil and gas and ins installations there. Uh, we talk about the workplace as being an information hub, uh, and it's there that you manage the, the, the assets of a, a property. It's a document a, a process system, it's an asset process system, it's a reporting system, it's an auditing system, uh, and they all link back to location. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more uh, when we look at the workplace. But these are our, our three core uh, systems. And we talk about consolidation uh, across an enterprise or across an organization, having a centralized system that integrates all the various elements of health and safety, asset management, document management, uh, uh, accident, incidents, environment, and it integrates them all together in one, one location. Um, and so you're, you're taking data and you're making it work for you rather than having it in disparage situations across an enterprise. Uh, it brings it all together into one location. Um, in the system, it's made up of a number of different modules, but they all talk to each other. And when we deliver the system, everyone gets the whole system. Uh, you may not use the whole system, you get the whole system though. Uh, and so a number of core administrators in your company would have access to the system, but the, the, 
individuals, your, your operational managers may only make use of work incident or work accident or something like that. I, the people at the coalface may just use that. They may use work task. I, your I, HR people would use the competency element and training. Um, so you only pay for the bits that you're actually using, although you get the whole system uh, and it integrates together. The, um, it, when we were developing the system, we started off with these three uh, core components. We then realized that people want to see information. Information is completely useless unless you're doing something with it. And we talk about actionable analytics. Uh, and with actionable analytics, we create dashboards. Essentially, uh, we say, what do you want to see? Um, in one dashboard, it's a daily dashboard, a daily digest. And in a hospital, they can see what contractors turned up, what work they're doing, uh, where they are in the, in the premises, and uh, where they were last week or whatever. In, a, a, in another scenario, a, in the aggregate a company we're working with, they have uh, their dashboard is, is focused more on near misses, accidents, visual felt leadership, uh, all these elements, rather than a daily dashboard of who's on site. So it's really a case of what do you want to see, and that's put uh, that becomes your focus. Because people work in locations, they have accidents and incidents, and so we built in an accident incident system. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. Um, and I, people use contractors, and the minute you use contractors, you expose yourself to risk. And what we say is, uh, in the same way that your workforce, uh, contracting and direct labor should all be within the workforce, so you're managing both them, you know their competency, they're on your site, you're responsible for them, you need to know their competency, so you need to have them in the workforce, but you also need to manage the, the contractors and in many places, people go through, contractors go through a, a pre-qual to get a, working with a particular company. Um, and what we do is we talk about this being a post-qual, a dynamic qual, whereby the same a, legislation compliance that you would expect for yourself, you're expecting these guys to uh, conform to. And you're measuring and monitoring those as well. So you're able to tell when uh, they need something done. You're not doing it for them. You're expecting them to populate that with their information. But you're then able to see that during the, your engagement with them, uh, that they are compliant as a contracting company and that they're uh, capable of, of delivering the services that you want. And of course, the beauty about using the work contractor system is that um, you can then look and compare deliveries from different contractors. If you're a contractor, that might be a bit scary. But you are able to see this guy performed doing that task and it took him two hours, whereas we've got a guy on another site who's done that job in one hour. Uh, you can do that. You can audit the contractors. And that's just a tool that you would want to use rather than uh, we put that in. Um, Work Verify is a... Uh, the tool that we use for access into government buildings, schools, and hospitals. And essentially, it's a gatekeeper system. It looks at the guy who's turning up, the contracting company is from, and what it starts to do is it then uh, allocates him to the sites that he's got authorization, he's been inducted in, and he's qualified to go, uh, and it will then allow them access into either the school or the hospital or the government premises. And that's interesting, but it's not where uh, you guys are. What may be a bit more appropriate is Work Highway, which we developed in conjunction with one of the major utility companies. Uh, and essentially what this does is it takes the work that people are going to do, but it drives it down to the, the roadside uh, where they're doing it and allows them to um, manage the work that's taking place at the roadside and to be able to... Uh, I, make changes at the roadside dynamically and instead of having to cease work and go back because a, a piece of pavement needs to be moved onto the road or whatever, a, a bypass, a, they can do all that electronically and report back to the system and it can be approved and then passed through. Uh, and that's more for utility companies and highway companies at the side of the road. And there's a spin-off from that which we're working with one of the other utility a companies which is called Work Grid, and it's more for uh, managing the, 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 the highway in the sky, which is the, the electrical systems. Um, so that, those are our, our current core, core modules. We've got a couple more in development. But uh, across those modules, 
we have an auditing tool and the auditing tool works uh, in a variety of circumstances. You can audit the contractor, you can audit the delivery of services, you can audit the, the training that a person's received or delivered, you can audit you can do fire safety audits of the premises or whatever. So audits are, are built into each of the different modules um, and there is a, a centralized uh, administration core each. Module has its own individual uh, administration that you can configure and set up. Uh, but administrators can access the whole system and uh, can uh, do it from a central location. We've recently, in conjunction with the aggregate company, introduced visual felt leadership. And I'm not so sure that everyone is familiar with that, but it's a dew point system. And essentially what it's doing is it's taking a behavioral analysis uh, down to the shop floor and it's, it's taking senior management on a, on a monthly basis a quality manager, supervisors, we go out and observe different work and then make recommendations out of that. It could be very positive recommendations uh, to reward someone. They could also be negative. So what's happening is you're, you're improving health and safety at a, a different level. You're not just uh, capturing uh, near misses and uh, accidental spills or uh, accidents that are happening. And these are good for indicating where issues are. This is actually getting out down to the cold face and observing so that you're catching things at an earlier point and hopefully that does uh, introduce a, a, a greater rigor across the company. It also shows the management involvement with the company. Uh, that these guys are, you know, the top guys are coming out and actually observing and working with the guys who are doing the job to see how that can actually be improved or what's happening. So that's visual felt leadership. Uh, onto that, you've got action plans. So there will be remedial tasks that need uh, uh, action. There will be rewards that need to be distributed. There will also be um, training needs that would come out of that. And the meeting uh, plans, the action plans, would be uh, based around the location as well, uh, whereby at a location you've got a site safety meeting and three or four guys need to do something out of that. That then puts them into the action plan then distributes that and it's then uh, seen in a grid that you can see this is due this week, that's due next week. Or, and so this, the quality manager would look and say, well, what have I got to do this week? What meeting, uh, what actions have I got out of that? So these are the, the, the elements that, that run across the different modules. And um, the reason we're probably here uh, today is because uh, we've integrated the, the Institute of Quality CPDR uh, into the system so that when someone's doing it there, and I, I, I think it's a, it's a terrific app because what it does is it gives the operative at the shop floor uh, the ability of being involved in continued professional development and recording that and it may well be he's working in a truck uh, and that gets recorded in the details well that goes into the WorkSAS system and then we then uh, taught up the you know whatever the, the, the requirements that you set for professional development for that operative and that links straight back in and the links are currently in place for the IQ uh, CPDR uh, and it's uh, there for the company we're working with. The system is modular, it's a toolbox really for uh, doing the different tasks, it's available on the web uh, and it can be accessible anywhere that the web is accessible on any kind of device even how be it's wearing Blackberry. We have run it on Blackberry and one of the council said to us, I mean I'm driving through the city and I can look up at a roof and see a guy working there and I can go and access and who is that guy and see his details. Yes you can. Uh, and you could do that by demonstrating that using the Blackberry. I wouldn't recommend it as a, as a serious endeavour but it is possible to do it. Um, what I'd like to do is to uh, briefly dive into the, the, the three elements. Uh, the first one is the workforce, and we talk about that being uh, an HR system. Uh, it's nothing to do with finance, it's all to do with competency, uh, occupational health, fitness to work, uh, training uh, and experience. And you can see on the front page that you, you that the green button would indicate that the competency of this guy is, is within three months. And then of course it will change, uh, so that you then uh, will know that this person needs to be uh, refreshed in the training or something like that. But it captures all the details 
I, if someone has an accident, you put immediate access into their news and nicks and kin and stuff like this. Um, but that's the, the, the competency, and, and you, you, you monitor and you, you schedule a, a medical training, a, a medical needs training, a, the personal profile. You can run a site inductions online uh, if that needs to be, and you can run, there's a whole toolkit there for running online toolbox talks, task briefs so that people can access those and do them and reflect back into the training. Uh, and you then got the competency, which is the mixture that you said. Uh, we generally start with a company with induction and say, right, okay, core competency to get access into a site is induction. So the guys have done induction test, right, let's start there. And over the next number of months, you start to populate the details. You put the qualifications in, you put in the experience, you then start to uh, put the training in and you schedule new training. So you then start to build up this training module. Uh, and of course you've got fitness to work where the occupational nurse can, and, and people themselves can actually uh, indicate um, their own uh, uh, things that they're averse to. Uh, and you can see the employment history schedule. Uh, but fitness to work is actually quite important. I, because it's, 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 it's something that people can self-declare and say, I've got a problem in that. And that will fly it up when you go to use them in a particular job. I, to say, be alert, this person said, I don't like to find spaces. Or I'm adverse to asbestos, well, of course you are. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to be in that scenario. As well as the occupational nurse or doctor saying, fit to work or whatever. We do suggest that you use, if you use external or internal trainers, that you populate the details of the training. Uh, that allows you to go back and say, the last time that guy was trained in such and such a caterpillar lift loader, uh, they didn't have that piece of kit. Was he trained in that? And you can see, no, he wasn't, so therefore we need to uh, go back. But you uh, you either capture that yourself or you get the person or the company is delivering the training to do that. Uh, and this is fitness to work and self-declaration. Uh, and. Uh, you would use the training scheduler for training, uh, for scheduling things like uh, noise or hearing tests or x-ray and um, you would do that, uh, you would set that according to the skill so that someone who is uh, working at the rock face, you would be testing for silicosis or whatever it would be and you'd be scheduling that on a, on a yearly basis or whatever uh, and that would be in, in their schedule uh, and that's our schedule. Now, what I've got there is the, the, the show of the, the, the details populated into the internal training from the IQR. Uh, and it will populate, auto populate the details that are there. Uh, and then it will, I should show, uh, yeah, it will auto populate the linked evidence as well. So any documents that they've uploaded, or videos, or photographs, that will also auto populate into the system. Um, from the CPDR. Now, the, um, I'm going to try and run through this very quickly. Uh, this is more using the work task and the person at the point of work in the highway. Uh, and uh, essentially, what you we're looking to do is drive the risk down, always down to the operative, by providing them with everything that they need to do the task. You're driving the risk down to them. Uh, and so you're giving them uh, manuals and you're, you're linking into the red book and various things like this. And this is just an illustration of the work that's due across a particular uh, location, a geographical location, uh, and the status of that work. What they see on, on a tablet, uh, they don't see the whole document, they can open it up, uh, but they get a summary. Uh, and then you start to, you can see who the guys are on the team, who photographs of them. Uh, you then start to link into the, the documents that they've got there that, uh, that are linked in. And of course, what you're doing is for a particular task, you're giving them the, the information that's relevant for that task. So if they're working on the roadside and need to put barriers in, you provide that with the task that, I, that they've then got the information to do straight out of the red book. And that's all you're doing. You're just putting this uh, in the hands of the guy who's actually doing the task. Uh, and of course you've got a risk assessment. This is one with controls. Every task has an inherent risk, but this is the risk after it's been mitigated by the method statement that you're implementing and using. 
Um, and of course, you've got a task list check sheet and you can mix. I, I put a 10 on there. I, but for that task, it'd probably be two. Just check we've got CAT scans. Tick, that's fine, okay. I, and that would be, for every task, you can, you can I, create your own I, checklist. I, and of course, at the point of work, you can take photographs and our documents and I, add them in so that they go back up. So it's always dynamic. I, and that's essentially the work highway. I, and driving risk down to, I, and giving control down to the guy who's actually doing the job at the point of work. Um, so that's uh, uh, people doing tasks. Uh, people have accidents, obviously, uh, and we have a full accident incident management system where you can uh, report an accident incident or uh, report an EMS, uh, report a visual felt leadership issue, uh, or report an environmental spill or whatever, and that's captured in the system. Uh, and a lot of details, and I'm sure you've seen these a dozen things, but you can link in the witnesses and the people and uh, various other elements of that and the documents and so on. And you build up a, a, re, a, a link into the accident. What we are doing is we're working with the insurance company where you press a button, it's a claim button, and it will immediately consolidate all the information that's captured in the accident incident form, uh, all the documents, the root cause investigation, the initial investigation, and summarize them together and pump them out to the insurance company so that very quickly at the press of a button, they've got all that information and they can act on that as your brokers or whatever. Uh, and of course, you, you, you can uh, administer the accident incident. Uh, you can capture HSE, I should say that here. Uh, you can capture their, their, their costs. You can capture all the costs and form, who you inform with an accident and all these kind of things. You can clarify the, the, the incident because the guy may not have done it right and the admin person will do that. And of course you create action, you create action plans out of that uh, and you assign them that. Of course there's all the action plans that are set out and a dashboard showing the types of accidents, you know, a security incident or an operational incident or a quarry incident. And you can categorize as, as appropriate. And you can do a initial investigation uh, which would just be a quick uh, check over to uh, categorize it, but you can drive it down to a uh, root cause and you can go through and you can create your own root cause, uh, organization, people, processes, man uh, management. And you can, this is an illustration of an audit being used and it's being used as a need memoir for an accident. So what you're doing is, it's not quite auditing, it's actually uh, putting a whole list of questions that are relevant for uh, the person who's doing initial investigation to make sure they've gone through all the, they've ticked all the boxes in, and I don't mean tick the boxes, they've actually performed what is vital, they've not missed anything out, and so it gives them the, the ability to do that, and you can create that. Now, uh, that's people, that's uh, processes, it's accidents. Uh, uh, the, the, the asset repository or the document place, which is a workplace, we talk about it's an information hub for managing compliance and essentially it's an asset management system that's core, it's global uh, and it's, uh, I'll, I'll talk about in, in a sense of the breed and aggregates would be the top, uh, their uh, uh, regional subsidiaries would be Scotland and England and then the regional sites would be across Scotland or across the northwest of England or whatever and then down to the sites and then down to the locations within the site, and then down to the assets within that site. So you, you start, this is an illustration from a hospital, uh, showing the, uh, the company we're working with in the hospital, and driving down to the asset list at the very bottom there. Uh, so you, you, you begin to build up a, a, a history of events around assets. If someone has an accident or an incident, it relates to the location they've done it in, Relates, links to the asset they were working on and it also reflects into their uh, record as well. I, and what you can do is we have what we call a care alert which is quite unique. Uh, it means that when someone's going to do a task they will flag up in the centre of that task and say the risk of this task was you know, whatever, you've mitigated it, but be alert. There was an incident someone doing this last time. Last time they were blasting here the guy blew his head off or whatever please be aware and don't do that, you know. Uh, 
But that's, uh, that drives it down uh, at that point. And you can, when you're building your document management system, you can subcategorize. So you've got corporate policies, you've got regional policies, you've got site policies, you've got location uh, documentation. It means that when someone's at the point of work, everything they need documentation-wise is available to them. Uh, it consolidates, I guess, uh, across a multiple of systems. So you've got manuals, you've got photographs, uh, you've got some, all the site certificates, etc. must apply for you. Compliance documents are slightly different because they need to be managed. They need to be, they run out at a certain period of time. So you put compliance documents separate and they come back up. Uh, and so that's an information hub. And of course you can audit uh, across the premises. And there's just a, a comparison audit of the fire safety, Legionella, health and safety, whatever. And you can compare and contrast. The beauty about the auditing system is if you've done an audit previously, you can virtually replicate that again as a template and then re-edit it again. So you don't have to do it the second time. It cuts down a considerable amount of auditing work. Uh, and of course, you can create and do your own. You can audit virtually anything. Uh, and then you, you identify your training needs and requirements. And of course, you can schedule your audits. Um, essentially, we've been talking about the, the, the criticality of dashboards, and they are quite critical. I, because this is where most of this, the management act, I, they need to see information, I, and it's presenting that information in the dashboards that makes it uh, pretty useful. Uh, and it demonstrates your compliance with your, your regulatory requirements, and you can create whatever you like. Uh, in this case, it was uh, the different near misses across different sites of hospitals and so on. Uh, and I've jumped through. And of course, you've got operational dashboards, which are different from the executive dashboards. Uh, the guy at the shop front, he's not interested in the overview. He wants to see what's happening today. He wants to see what work's taking place. Uh, and he can, of course, see that at a glance, uh, what's, uh, what's coming through or whatever the guy does. So these are the basic uh, features and the, uh, the benefits of the system. Uh, essentially, the commercial structures Fairly simple, you get the whole system, you only pay for what you use. Uh, you don't pay, you don't buy the whole system, you, you pay for what you use. Uh, so if you've got 100 guys who are using, charge for 100 guys who are using that module, you only charge you know, 100 times of the whole system. Uh, and the system is, it's uh, applicable across a, a, a broad range of, of sectors, uh, quarrying, uh, facility management, uh, offshore, uh, and we're currently working with uh, the Institute of Occupational Medicine in terms of integrating occupational health and occupational medicine into the system as well. And that's happening in Singapore at the moment uh, with them. So, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll try to be as brief as possible. I'm not sure I've done that, but uh, that's a very brief overview.